Ghana is so much of a wonderful place with rich cultural history. The struggles and toils of our motherland collected and displayed in one place. Today, we tell a trip to the Ghana National Museum to see the untold and to learn for ourselves. Follow us on this great expedition. The museum is divided into four sections, namely beginnings, states, kingdoms and nations. Though each part sounds unique, they all tell a story. The beginning section looks at the Stone Age period and some items from pre-colonial era. So, hello. Welcome to the National Museum of Ghana. The current exhibition is titled Unity in Diversity. It talks about how different we are, but at the end of the day, we need to come together to achieve our goals. These are items such as the Koma Terracotta figurines. It also looks at a map of the travel history of the indigenous Ghanaians. As stated earlier, this section has a unique story to tell, and it follows directly after the section before it. The state division, which follows directly after the beginning, looks at the lifestyle of indigenous families. So this part of the museum talks about the various states that existed um, pre-colonial era. So we have the various tribes like the Asantes, the Eves, and other tribes in Ghana. So um, this part looks at like at their war dress that they used to have because of intertribal wars which made them group themselves as states or as groups. It pays attention to items such as clothing, trade and different architectural designs like the Larabanga Mosque. The section also shows traditional medicine in the form of local leaves and herbs. Moving forward, the section shows the lifestyle of the people and their tools of livelihood, which was mostly made out of iron. The third division, which falls under kingdoms, portrays the various leadership styles among the different ethnic groups in Ghana. We have a portrayal of the Akans, their king and queen, as well as that of the northern group. Due to the rampant occurrence of wars among the various states, some of these states came together to form larger and more powerful kingdoms. And so this gallery in the museum provides evidence of the various happenings among the various kingdoms at that time period. We also have on display a setting of the traditional kitchen that was common in that time period. It also portrays various rituals and beliefs that exist among the different ethnic groups. Notable among them are the rites of passage, the Dipo rites, and other beliefs existent among the ethnic groups. The final section, which gives an overview of life after colonization, portrays items of significance such as the presidential seat of the late president, the surgical Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. We have here the chair of state, also known as the presidential seat. This is the original chair which was used in the swearing of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on Republic Day, 1st July 1960. As well as a collection of presidential gifts from other African leaders, such as the sword of the late Gaddafi. Music has been one of the most essential parts of the Ghanaian culture. And in this section, we are highlighting on the famous Afro band, Osibisa. Ghanaians are recognized for a lot of things, 
such as their love for games and music. One such collection of music, which is proudly displayed in this section, is that of the Osibisa group, notable for songs such as Sunshine Day and Welcome Home. One clear representation of games, which is loved and played by majority in the country, is that of Owari. As mentioned earlier, Ghanaians are notable for their love of games. Oware is one of the famous local games we have in Ghana. It goes way back in the mid-90s and this game brought the various tribes together. Another example of a sport which unites the people, though not traditional, is football. This section portrays one prominent person in the history of football for Ghanaians. Abedi Pele, who was regarded as the greatest African footballer in his time. Football has always been a great part in the Ghanaian culture. That is why this section of the museum was dedicated to football. Beside me is a mannequin in the image of Abedi Pele, one of the greatest players in the Ghanaian football history. Unlike today that we have mobile phones through which we can connect easily with our friends, in the olden days they didn't have that luxury. They used to communicate to, to each other through letters or posts. And the medium through which we're able to tell which country a person came from. Their cultural heritage was through the use of postage stamps. The postage stamps are kind of depictions of the various cultures of different people. We have um, some that talk about the major, the major um, artifacts in a country. We have some from Ghana, we have some from Korea, we have some from Ivory Coast, different parts of the world. Aside the four major divisions, the museum has a division for children to keep them entertained while their parents or guardians tour the museum. It also has an art gallery. For those who love art, the art gallery is worth a visit. The museum has a gift shop for tourists or even locals who would like to find surveys or would like to send them back. Outside, there's a wonderful portrayal of the various vehicles used by past presidents, like the late John Rollins and even the late Dr. Kwame Hill. On the lighter side, there are two Itri stories composites. During our tour, we approached one of the tourists to share her experience. This has been an awesome time here at the Ghana National Museum, learning about the great history of Ghana. But that's not the end. You can come and visit in person and get a more physical experience. And believe me, you are sure to love it. Until then, it's been a wonderful time. Goodbye.